Hi, good day, Andrew. What's up? Hi, Antonio. Thank you so much um, for having me. I'm well. I'm, I'm great. It's good here in Jamaica. <laughs> great to hear. So, what was your challenges in the EHR field? Some of the challenges that I've come across um, are um, the lack of um, qualified um, candidates for, for, for various roles. Two, um, even though with the current situation, the COVID-19, um, we find that they, a lot of companies need to encourage their staff members to take the vaccine, but because it's not mm -hmm. data, they're having a challenge there. So that's the current challenge that, that I'm seeing. Um, as well as, um, you know, the, the ability for, for HR to be fluid so just in case an issue like this or, or a pandemic like this happens, HR needs to be at a point where they change quickly yeah. and um, adapt it to situations. So, so the lack of adaptability and quickness as it relates to change are some challenges. And there are a lot of, other, a lot of others, but those are just some challenges um, off the top of my head. And, you know, sometimes... Some HR professionals just say that they do not find the right um, client or they did not find the right client for the um, right candidate for the job. But I would say that um, this is my sentiment. Mm -hmm. Finding the right candidate for your job sometimes will be challenging. However, it don't have something as the right or best fit candidate for the job. Because sometimes you might think, all right, I had the best candidate. And when they end the job, you realize that the candidate, they have a, a lack of interest in the job. They're not that passionate because selling yourself in an interview is not that hard. It has some people who are very persuasive, you know, and could be able to be very articulate in the interview process. But when it comes to the actual job, it's something different. But... What I will try, if I was an HR professional, a practitioner, I would have tried to find out from the candidate, you know, if they have the right attitude and aptitude for the job by asking certain questions. Because attitude, the right attitude, beat talent any day. And you can be talented, but if you do not, you know, work on your talent, you wouldn't be the best fit in that position but if you have the right attitude if you do not even know about the industry or i feel that you got the position for and you're not qualified for it you will find yourself eventually becoming a guru in that field yes yes absolutely and you are you are correct um that we should always and, and this is not in every case because there are some instances where um, it is really about um, those that can have the skill set. So, mm -hmm. um, and I can give you some examples. There are some regulated fields. There are some rules that regardless if you have a positive attitude, if you don't have the skill set, you just can't do the job. Um, so when we look at an account, when we look at... So, um, you know, being a, a, a medical practitioner. Yeah. These are some, um, some positions or some roles that definitely, definitely be particular skill sets. So mm -hmm. I would say that when we, when I look for attitude, I am comparing it with the ability of the candidate to perform the role. So the, mm -hmm. the, the conversation should be around competency um, as well as attitude. Because again, you can have somebody with the skills, but really have a bad, nasty attitude. And that doesn't do well for the company. You mm -hmm. know? And then you have those who don't have the skill set, but have a really good attitude. What we're really looking for is, okay, this candidate, we, what we're really looking for is somebody who is in the middle, you know, who has the skill and has the attitude. Mm -hmm. But what if we get somebody who doesn't have the skill, but has the attitude? 
are we but have the attitude are we willing to train how much it's going to cost to train so when we look at hiring and and and, and talent acquisition it's really a, a deliberate approach to the process um you know and i've heard other recruiters saying that we must hire for the anniversary date rather than the start date so in other words look at how long the candidate is going to spend with the company and okay. build your, your, your interviews your questions around that if that makes sense okay great i will accept that and in terms of some of the challenges that you outline how um was you able to overcome those challenges you know um in terms of of interviews what i find is that when job seekers come to the interviews mm -hmm. they would rather and this is not for everybody you usually find this happening when it's for middle management to to entry level roles however for middle managers don't we tend to find the lack of research and even when they do their research when they come in the interview they're not able to to, to um to take the interviewer on a journey to showcase how they've been successful in past roles mm -hmm. as well as how their past um experiences will positively affect the company that they're trying to to um to work for yeah. it's really about you know it's really about showing up as problem solvers so when i would say to job seekers when they are in interviews it's really about digging down and, and finding what are the challenges that the interviewers or the company is having and quickly mm -hmm. craft the solution around that and present it to the um to the interviews and that usually lacking in um in interviews. attitude trumps or success Mm -hmm. and um again you will find candidates with the right attitude employees um with the right attitude and they will um excel um so the right attitude is important but when we look at talent acquisition we're really looking for the right attitude and somebody again as i mentioned earlier with the skill set because as a recruiter when i'm looking for um uh, a technical role say mm -hmm. for instance a web developer let's take a web developer as a yeah for example that person might have the best of attitudes but if they don't know how to develop a website i can't do anything you know so again when when we're talking about attitude and hiring for attitude we are really saying that for you to be successful in this role um we can train you we will mm -hmm. train you. that that's what we're saying but if an employer doesn't have the time to train what will be important to that employer are really going to be skill set and attitude yes but yeah. this doesn't mean that you need to have a bad attitude and have the skill set you must have a positive attitude along with the skill set and then you'll be successful i would say based on the particular position because like for me being a sales professional i would say that i wouldn't limit it i would limit myself in terms of the um sales arena because the sales person is the sales differentiated differentiator in the market and basically yeah, yeah. you know um everyone sell a product or service but uh in a, with a sales person they buy into you you know so mm -hmm. the sales person is the person who makes a difference in the market whatever sector or market they may be in and one question that i have for you also too is that a lot of um in um job seekers you know they go to jobs um interviews often every time every time every time and they're not actually putting the icing on the cake they're getting job interviews but they are not getting the job itself so I would say it have many different reasons, you know, from even experience I'm talking about, is that sometimes a company, you might do great in an interview, but it's all about the decision makers. They may say, all right, two of you all was good, but I consider this person the better fit out of the two for whatever reason they may have. 
a problem that I have with some um, companies is that they do not provide feedback to the the person that come the interview. And the thing about it, sometimes they even provide feedback, but when it is now, you use your your intuitive mind and the feedback that they provide, it's not relevant. So I believe that a problem now is with you know the interviewers and the interviewee in such a way now that provide necessary relatable feedback. Because let's take this for example: two individuals, um, they pick one person and it have another person that they would have picked if that person did not get the opportunity. Okay, right? This person got into the job now. They're working maybe for a month, two months, and then after the third month, they start to go down in terms of the sales, let, let's say as a sales professional, and they decide, well, here what? You basically not bring in any um, profit to the organization, so we no longer need your services. And they decide now to go with the second person who um, would have got the job if they didn't select the first person. But the feedback that they give the first person, or they, let's say they didn't even give feedback to the person who didn't get the job as to what improve one, right? And this person coming into the organization basically a bit clueless because if they had provided necessary feedback, at least that person now for that time frame could have worked on developing what it is that they need to develop. So when now they get the opportunity to come to the organization to work, they know they have some kind of mindset going forward because things do happen and the world is uncertain. Yes, you hire someone, but anything could happen. This person could migrate, this person could go on to other opportunity. And now you may have the other person now, second, who they will want to come into the job. So I believe that the feedback is most important and appropriate, necessary feedback for the individual to work on themselves. And I would say that this conversation was very nice. It was very helpful for job seekers out there. And anyone who is watching on the replay, make sure and take in this conversation because a lot of nuggets of HR tips was presented. And thanks, Andrew, for taking your time for us to delve into HR. Though it might be short, but it was a lot of information in this time. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Anthony. Have a good You too. All right. Bye.